Um, and if you don't mind, let's let's just get right into it. Sure, let's do it. With the accident, um, going into the accident, brother, I was about 228 pounds, maybe something like 5 or 6% body fat, very high level of fitness, very happy, just overall high quality of life, um, working as a teacher, as a coach, as a professional trainer, as an author, running camps, just a very active individual, a father. Um, and then I'm sitting at a traffic light on my way to summer school where I teach meditation. I teach health education. And what I do is I teach meditation. Sitting at a light. <clears throat> and the next thing I know is I get hit from behind, lose consciousness. When I regain consciousness, there's a packed intersection. There's cars everywhere. But there's a car behind me. And it's much larger and it's like lodged into my car. It's trying to move away. I can't figure out what's going on because my head's shaking. My arms are involuntarily moving. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong here. Something's definitely wrong with my knee. I don't know what the hell just happened to my back. And I'm trying to figure out what happened. And I don't know where I am. But then I start figuring out, oh, wait, I'm going to summer school. I just got hit wait, I have a phone. I took out my phone and I took a picture of the hit and run. How about this? She tries to leave. Took a picture and then I called 911. Have no recollection of me calling 911. Operator saying 911, what's your emergency? And um, again, I, I remember this months after, but I was saying, I thought I was just having a conversation. I didn't realize that I called 911. Then I actually realized what was happening after maybe some time. I said, I've been in an accident, sitting in an intersection. This car is driving away. Officers actually found this car and pulled her to the side of the road because she wasn't able to get away. It was, a, it was a five lane intersection and she was trying to get away across four lanes and up onto a sidewalk. She was driving with a suspended license with a two-year-old in the back seat, texting on her phone and hit me going 35 in an SUV. I'm a school teacher teaching meditation, stopped at a red light. And in an instant, everything changed. I didn't know where I was and I had some serious permanent damage. I knew I wasn't mortally damaged, um, but I didn't realize the extent of the damage until kind of time had gone on um the whole thing with the accident was a complete blur again it was only like months later that i actually would remember and start to piece together things like the officer was trying to speak to me and was telling me what she said and that i was almost like too out of the situation to even communicate but i said just look at my car and i was hit from behind and it's as simple as that just do what you have to do and i need to get you know medical help so what had happened is i got the medical evaluation and the toll was like it was tremendous i had um an l4 l5 s1 pars fracture all the way through spondylolisthesis grade two to three so how it was explained to me is no one is going to touch your spine because the moment they cut it open because of the fracture, the bones are going to move. And with it, your spinal cord might get cut. So this was the risk. So I got strung along by a neurosurgeon for a couple of months who just wanted to make money off epidurals. And I figured out that scam right away too. And that pissed me off because I'm like, listen, I'm an honest man doing an honest thing, trying to get better. And if you want to make money, I have no problem with anybody making money. Just don't try to screw me over and other people while you're doing it. And guess what? I know what the hell you're doing. Guess what? I'm tougher than you. And I'm going to stand up and talk about you and what you're doing to you. And then I'm going to stand up on a box and tell everyone else about what the hell you're doing. It's called the standard of care. And it sucks. So once I found somebody that would operate... It was as simple as me saying, I trust you, you can do it, but tell me what's going to happen, <laughs> right? So let's back up. So that was the that was the back. The neck, I had two levels that moved 
15 degrees outside the normal curve. And it was something like, you know, 10% loss of longevity, they said. I'm like, I don't care what you say. I'm going to increase 10% of longevity. Yep. So the neck, I said, I'm not getting surgery. I'll find a way to rehab it. Still working with my way through it. The shoulder was almost a complete tear through the labrum, anterior, posterior, just kind of whipped all the way through during that hit. And that was rough. My right knee, the medial meniscus tore because when I got hit, I tried to push the brake down to stop my car. And I pushed, 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 and then it just gave way, tore, and that was that. So that one I actually had to rehab. That's an actually cool story that we'll talk about later, how I was able to move that knee within one day, walk within one week, and run within two. And that's never done in America. It's something done outside because of the standard of care. Wow. So the operation.